Hello and welcome to Metal Shaper Tom. This is episode four on the Austin 7 special build. So, in episode three, we basically brought a 2D drawing to a 3D wire form, or a rough, I call it rough, uh, three dimensional vision of basically what I'd sketched up. A few ideas I had, and I basically created this image of a car that I'd like to create. So, I've added to that frame now. And the next part of it is changing the chassis at the rear uh, just so it accommodates the boat tail and can take the weight. And then I'd also like to add uh, the rear structure or part of the rear structure around the back bracing, uh, around the scuttle panel and possibly the bulkhead. So that is the idea of this episode. Um, basically, one of us I got to report. Um, bit of artwork now for the workshop. Looks pretty cool hanging up there. It may have to come back down at some point. But yeah, that's its temporary home. Um, I do have a new purchase, a bowed front axle. So I'm really happy with that. Um, it's come from a good source. Uh, everything seems to be okay on it. I will get it tested, uh, stripped down, rebuilt. And my friend Simon will be helping me with this. So that's something to look forward to in a future episode. Uh, and I do have, for the BDI people here, a new TIG welder. Now, I will be using this throughout the project and I will possibly be giving it away to a viewer because basically when I started this channel, it was basically aimed at teaching people, helping people, getting people started into metalwork, transferring my skills and knowledge to people out there. And it's something that I enjoy doing and a lot of people want to learn how to weld. So I do have an ACDC TIG welder there which you'll see me using. And the idea is if I can incorporate in in some way uh, on the channel, I'd love to give that away to a viewer somewhere, possibly at the end of the build. So that's my plans with it, um, hopefully, but I'll get something a bit more permanent in place and announce that properly. But for this episode, I'm gonna be doing uh, the chassis and framework. Um, so that's pretty much it, so stay tuned. Okay, so with these new rear sections made and profiled to fit inside uh, the rear body, what I'm now gonna do is chop off the old existing ones and uh, replace them. And basically, I want them to be fitting around that sort of pipe. I'm just gonna weld a piece in there and uh, that's where I'll attach an additional bump stop later on in the build. But um, yeah, just eyeballing it up and using my old pattern. This is where I'd like the new rear frame to sit.
Okay, so finally, I got my Austin 7 Prescott t-shirt that took two weeks in the post to arrive. So my friend Ashley designed it for me. I'll just bring it up so you can see it. And I know you're thinking, what the hell has he got a rabbit on his chest for? But it's not a rabbit. That is actually the Prescott uh, course. So you start here and work your way around. So A7P, Austin 7 Prescott, it stands for. If you want one, let me know. I really like the design. Um, hopefully others do too. And uh, basically everything raised from that will then go back into the special build and the channel. So I'll leave a link in the description on how you can contact me if you want one. I'll make them as cheap as possible because I know there'll be thousands of people <laughs> that want one. So yeah, hit me up if you want and uh, thank you for this. Okay, so I just thought I'd take a moment to explain in this segment, uh, basically in reply to a lot of comments that I had in the previous video uh, about the body design and everything and people saying it's too low, your head pod's too low and uh, I know that and it's kind of, you know, if I brought it up any higher, I think it would spoil the look of the car of what I was actually going for because it then makes the back end a lot fuller. And in period, the cars were low and the head pods never came to your head. Now, if I had a head pod this high, it'd look bloody awful. And, you know, if I brought the back end up here, it'd be real sort of heavy at the back. And then trying to blend that into uh, a long front there and have that into a, a tail, I just don't think it'll work and it's not the look that I'm going for. So I know it's low, but I've purposely done that. And the head pod isn't functional, but it's basically aesthetically pleasing for me. You know, it, for me, it's more important on how the car looks visually than actually practically, practicality wise, you know, of the head pod actually working. But I think as it is, the proportions are right for me and what I'm after. Um, and I do get people's opinions and saying, raise the back. But I think for this project, it, it won't work with having the long tail. I think there'd just be way too much material at the back because it's a long car and it's narrow. We need to keep it quite dainty uh, and light looking. You know, once you start getting into big fuller shapes, it becomes quite heavy, but that's, just my opinion and how I'm building it for me. And I do get why people are saying that and I appreciate the feedback. Um, I just thought I'd just take this moment to explain why I've actually gone down that route. So hopefully that clears it up a little bit. Okay, on to the next job. So I've now modified all that body mount there, which is gonna support uh, my rear boat tail. I'm gonna make a fix in for that. Uh, and up in this area here, I am gonna have my fuel tank and uh, other bits. But now that's all complete there, I'm basically gonna chop away this area here and scallop it out. And the reason for that is I'd like to put a bucket seat in here, but this is in my way. So I still wanna incorporate this because I like the fact that it still looks like an Austin 7. It's still going down that route. I know the, the sports chassis don't have this in there, but I'm still gonna incorporate it. I still like the look, um, but I'm just gonna modify this bit here. So I'm gonna chop away as much material as possible. That will allow me to put a bucket seat in through here and cutting up through this area here and allow me to sit in the car a little bit lower. Um, I'm not gonna do it on the passenger side yet. I don't think I will. I will probably have a different styled seat for the passenger, but for the driver, um, I want a bucket seat uh, and that's the route I'm gonna go down at the moment. I may do that one if this turns out really well and I think it's the right idea to go down that route. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just gonna do the one side and see how it looks.
Okay, so the next bit, now I've modified those areas there, is going to be this internal structure. And with the shape of the body, it makes it a little bit awkward. So I'm going to need something to hold that internal structure because I want it to be an aluminium structure and I need it to attach to a steel chassis. So I'm going to have to make a bracket. So I've made this little template that's going to fit around there. It's enough clearance for the spring to move up. Um, so I think at the moment for that can be modified and this is going to hold my internal structure which is going to consist of a 25 mil uh, 2 mil aluminium angle which is going to be shaped to that profile and then off of that to add a bit of rigidity is going to be a uh, sort of L piece aluminium uh, 1.5 panel that's going to follow that profile that's going to be dimple dye just to add a little bit of strength uh, and make it look a bit more period. So I'll explain that as I go along, but hopefully that will be strong enough for this over piece here. And if I'm happy with the result, I will then do that for the scuttle panel and uh, possibly the bulkhead as well. So that's how I'm going to approach it. But first of all, I've got to get these brackets into place um, and these are going to be made out of two mil steel and I think that should be plenty. Okay so I made it out of two mil thinking it would be enough but actually when that's just holding the body on I think there's going to be a little bit of play just purely because how tall it is and there is a little bit of flex in there. Um, so as a precaution, I'm going to beef it up to 3 mil. Luckily enough, I've got some in stock. And uh, yeah, just going to make them out of 3 mil. Uh, edge on the side of caution. It's better to beef them up a little bit rather than uh, running the risk of them being too flimsy and uh, snapping down the line. To the next bit, I now need to construct my inner frame for my 2mm, uh, 25mm by 25mm angle uh, that I've bought. Um, I'm literally just going to follow this profile around here and I'm going to take this line along here. But like I said in the previous video, I want this to have shape all the way through and these are just straight down. So I am going to uh, incorporate just a little bit of shape. Um, to my inner structure and then this will determine the outside shape. It'll be very subtle because I want it to be well, subtle all the way through but I don't want it to be flat so it's important that I add the shape into this frame if I'm going to be riveting it to the body uh, otherwise it's just going to pull that body in uh, the rivets are going to make awful marks in the body and uh, it's just another thing to try and preempt uh, before those things happen. So that's what I'm going to do, simple pattern, and then this is going to be my guide to basically bend my angle iron too. So what I'm doing now is just shrinking this round it very gradually. You don't want to start stretching the back if you can help it. And like a nice smooth radius. And what I want this to do, once I bend that round, is basically 
following my profile. So I've obviously got quite a bit to go there, but uh, that's what I'm planning on doing with this. So I've got some new drawers in here at the moment. They're from Stacey's. Uh, definitely recommend the upgrade to your machine. They're not as coarse as the next ones. So they're not gonna rip up the material as much. If you give that a call from Stakesies, they definitely help you out and mention me. They'll do me a favour as well. So this is in place now. I'm happy with where it's touching for the time being. A uh, little bit tricky actually, caught me out ever so slightly uh, with the shape around here. I've had to stretch this edge along here just to add a bit of a an angle to it, just so it flares out. I'll do that on the other one and I'll film that one so you can see. But what I do now is repeat it, add a bracket over here and then make it this section along here now. Okay, so I've now got these shaped up and uh, quickly fixed into place here. I've got some uh, little steel brackets that I need to brace a bit more um, and they're only tacked in. Uh, once I remove this wire form, I can then get these aluminium fixtures into their true position uh, because at the moment they're all eight and in some cases 16 mil inbound. So once I remove this, I can then get them into their true position. I've also made this little piece that's going to go over the rear spring. Uh, haven't finalised the position for that, so I just want to double check uh, when there's two people standing on the back that I've got enough uh, clearance there. And this piece here that I'm going to shape up links the rear section, rear aluminium frame to the front along the bottom. And I'm going to shape it that way, um, and then my body skin is going to attach through there. It's going to be riveted on uh, and how I'm going to gauge basically how much shape I need is I've got these profile gauge uh, gauges uh, or sweeps they're traditionally known as. Uh, I've had a hundred made. I have had other sets made if anyone is interested and I'll be using these throughout the build uh, when it comes to the body work. Basically you work out what shape or you know what shape you want, you find the right profile sweep, you offer it up and that is your guide. So I know I need another 16 from this point here to here and that is my reference point there so I'm going to offer that up. And I know I need a 16 in here because it's going to be the same shape as my body. So this is what I'm going to offer it up to. So that is my next task. I'm just going to probably skin pin these all into place. I'm not going to fully weld them in yet. Uh, that can be done further down the line when I know it's all in the exact place that I want it. 
at the moment all this can move so that's what I'm going to crack on with now. Okay, so the next stage, uh, that's all my, uh, well, the start of my framework. Uh, I've got some more material on the way, um, but they're all bent up and that's obviously gonna make the rear section, the scuttle panel and the bulkhead section. And I've got some segments running along the bottom to tie it all together. Uh, I've just ordered some more material, so that's gonna link all of this up here and add a bit more additional support. Um, there is more material that is gonna join on to all of these uh, to stiffen it up. So this is just the start of the, the basic outline shape and that is gonna basically form my cockpit area uh, to the car. Okay, so this is coming along quite nicely. Uh, just being really cautious, uh, double checking like measurements and levels and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that I've, I've noticed, which I haven't put enough shape into, where I've stretched these edges because I don't think that body's gonna be coming round. So these aren't gonna be 90 degrees. Uh, they're gonna be flared out to suit the body. Uh, but just laying a straight edge over I shall get another angle now and show you. Okay, let's bring this episode to an end because it kind of has dragged on, hasn't it? Um, so where have I got to? I've basically made my cockpit area or mopped most of it up. So when I say mopped it up, it's all tacked into place because this is basically subject to change. I've got to start somewhere. Um, I do think I am going to have to add a bit more shape uh, in a few areas. But until I start forming my panels, I'm not going to know to the true extent. Um, I've come off my wire buck, I've added shape where I think it's needed, um, but I still think I need to add a bit more. But um, that's why it's only tacked in place. I can just break the tacks and add a bit more shape into the structural frame that I need. Uh, in the next part of the episode, I would like to develop my bulkhead uh, coming down here. Uh, it's behind the tire, I know. Um, and behind the pedal box. Uh, what else? This area here where I've got these dimple dyed uh, section, I am gonna play around with that. Uh, this is gonna follow all around the frame, all around the scuttle panel here and reinforce that. It's all gonna be solid riveted together and add a lot more structure to this aluminum frame that is very lightweight and we need to stiffen it up. And what else is there? So, with this, I will be adding gussets into the corners and all up into the scuttle area here. So this is just a starting point and this will be beefed up as I go along. I have got to work out 
where it's going to go to and how I'm going to incorporate the frame that's going to go to the front cowl uh, and hold the radiator in place. And I think in part of the next episode, I am going to develop the back boat tail area and structure. I am going to have to basically come up with a way of supporting that boat tail because that is a, a huge amount of area to be hanging over the back wheels and not having any support. So I am going to have to come up with a, a way to do that and keeping that basically in this uh, theme. So that is basically mocking up the framework there, kind of part one of a, a two part and which will develop as it goes along. I know I am going to have to get on with the mechanical side of it, but I do need Simon's help for that and uh, just arranging some time with him to get that sorted. But until that's happening, I'm just going to carry on working with the frame and uh, seating area and developing the bonnet area and basically making an area as well for the bonnet to sit into. So there's lots of things to think of, uh, bits probably I haven't even thought of yet, so which are going to bite me in the ass a bit further down the line probably. But that's all part of the journey so thanks for watching it uh this episode if you've made it this far uh please check out my instagram metal shaper tom so you can kind of see what i'm up to on a daily basis and that is pretty much it support the channel if you'd like to i do have some slappers available uh which i can ship worldwide t-shirts and stuff like that so thanks for making it uh this far and i'll see you in the next episode ciao